the next question was we've kind of talked talked about this briefly but um so obviously you were one of the few people of color from your season or just on drag race down under in general and someone asked did that add any pressure to your run and a few other people kind of were asking do you think that drag race needs to do more for like people of color representation and things like that because obviously that was touched on on your season and obviously on season one as well Totally. Um, look, I, I did feel, I think I, I was very clear about what my purpose was going to be walking into my season because um, I do advocate and I am a, like an activist and I work with so many First Nations sort of action groups here in Australia, as well as sort of, you know, run my own um, house, which is tailored towards amplifying the voices of Black, Indigenous and people of colour. Um, I knew that the purpose that I had to serve in that workroom was to make sure that if any conversations came up around race, you know, like it did in episode one, I was in season one, that they were hand with the care and the nuance that was necessary and you know I also didn't want to be one of those queens that about drag race not knowing what the like what it's like what it's like on the inside you know what the surroundings are like you know I wanted to be able to actually help the, the conversation and also you know see what goes wrong you know out on the other side of the camera to be able to offer um advice or even um offer people like people that do that kind of work um daily so I feel like up to my season, it's been great seeing that there's seven queens of color in um, season three. Um, but I do really think rather than just being more more about representation, it's a, it's more about having people of color in the editing room to handle these stories, you know? Because how are you going to be a non-person of color? You know, how will you understand the nuance behind some of these lived experiences when you haven't got that lived experience? You might be an ally, which is fabulous and incredible, but unless you walk that walk or understand the sort of intricacies of what it feels like to be up against a system that is not for you, how are you going to write that story as an editor, you know? And so I think there needs to be more representation, definitely, but I also feel like um, there needs to be more um, colour, you know, in the editing room especially the ones choosing the lip sync songs. <laughs> we need a bit more f***ing melanin in that that part of the freaking production. Definitely, not a bit of song choices in some of these mother So, yeah, I, I feel like, it's, it, is, like <laughs> it needs to be more in the editing room. And I, I don't think this is, this is not a conversation to RuPaul's Drag Race, because Drag Race is a pretty well-oiled machine. It's more Drag Race Down Under. That's the kind of thing that I would suggest they shift, because I know that minimal shifts have happened to that team yeah okay that's interesting because obviously you what i thought was really interesting was obviously so season one did have there was the thing about the racism and the blackface and think like obviously that was really not good and then um on your season obviously there was that moment in the workroom where you and hannah talked because hannah had been there was some like cultural appropriation in her past and things and you talked about that i always wondered because you said you knew Hannah a little bit, was that conversation, obviously it was really important to have, and I'm glad you, I thought you handled it so amazingly and you were very eloquent and everything. Was it quite awkward in a way to do that with a friend or was it kind of, you just felt like it needed to be done and that was it and... Yeah, the producers had offered us, like they they said that that was happening in the, in the they said that, in the blogs, people were talking about Hannah in that way and whether she wanted to address it. And obviously, like, looking around the room, there were only a few queens of colour in that space. And so, you know, for me, I wasn't uncomfortable because it's th those conversations, and I think that the way that I handle those conversations, you know, with Grace, it's, it's just, like, because I do this regularly. Like, I have these kinds of conversations regularly or, like, I'm, I'm sort of primed in that conversation and, and, and offering an anti-inflammatory approach rather than an inflammatory approach. With Hannah's case in particular, like, like, I was already aware that, you know, her situation was so far different to season one's situation. You know, I don't even want to say that person's name because I know just the intention was completely different. So it wasn't awkward. It was just needed. And I think the way that it played out, like I was very clear in saying, like, if this conversation is going to be aired, it needs to be aired in its entirety rather than just you snipping the best bits based on what you think, because you don't have anyone in your editing room that would understand what's important parts of this. Because if you are going to do it that way, then you're speaking for a community that it's not for. You know, if this is about trying to offer, you know, not a Band-Aid, but a solution or like a way of, you know, resolving these kinds of issues then we need to air the conversation how it's done and um 
get the right people in the editing room to make sure that it's you know adheres to protocol and you know it speaks to the nuance of race especially here in Australia because the thing about Australian history is like we have they have and I, I mean that because I this is where I really do um say I'm a Kiwi queen but Australia has a real issue with acknowledging its history when it comes to race especially around the first nations community here in australia like even the fact that we're voting for a referendum at the moment to say yes to first nations and aboriginal people getting a voice one chair at the table it's like why like it's just absolutely beyond me how ridiculous these conversations are and even though we're making baby steps it's like yeah some of these conversations really don't need to be had they should just be human instinct like we should already be past the point of like questioning whether someone needs a seat at the table like we do people do like how do you get heard like that's where we say representation but yeah it's it's it was important to have that conversation with hannah and important to have that conversation in the workroom um but yeah, it was, it was very much on my side that I said, you know, this needs to be edited the right way. So there needs to be the right people editing this conversation. Otherwise, it's just void. And then the racist of season two isn't Hannah. It's production. Like, so that's up to you. Write it right or write it wrong. Up to you. No, no, it was it was a very, it was, I really appreciated that conversation. I thought it was so important for that because you were one of the only uh, people of colour on the show on that season or just generally. And I thought you handled it so amazingly and you came across very educational and like, I just thought the way you handled it was the perfect response and it was really educational and I think it really helped. Um, so yeah, just that was, I thought that was such an amazing conversation. Mm-hmm.